Uh, this is a short tutorial on indirect questions. Um, we want to be able to determine whether something is a direct question like this right here. You guys see the two, two quotations and then it ends with a question mark. Those are direct questions. So this one says, who killed the boy? Quis is nominative, interfecit is our verb, and then puerum is accusative. We know that if we've been practicing our endings, we know that that's accusative because of the U-M. We know that this is third person and singular because of the T. And we uh, we have to remember that quis is, is the nominative form. Uh, the next one, if you notice, is going to have this question in it. Here's the question that was asked in number one. Who had killed the boy? Now, the tense has changed. We've gone from the uh, perfect tense and interfecit, or from the perfect tense, to the pluperfect subjunctive. Now, that happens because this question in number one is being asked in the present tense. It's right now, here's the question. However, in number two, we're telling or retelling the, uh, the question. And so the tense has changed because the question was asked in the past. And that's why we're reading the pluperfect subjunctive. Um, with the pluperfect subjunctive, we have some other clues that tell us that this is an indirect question. We have skiabot. In order for us to have an indirect question, we have to have a verb, a main verb, that is either a mental action, an asking verb, or a speaking verb. This one, skiabot, to think or, or to know, is a... Uh, is a mental action. So the translation to number two, no one knew or was knowing who had killed uh, the boy. And our indirect question, of course, is the quis puerum interfecissa. Uh, on number three, we get another direct question. You should be able to recognize that from the quotations and from the question mark at the end. Um, once again, we're going to get we're going to get the same question, the ubi pecunium in Winterant. We're going to get it in the next sentence, in number four. And the change is that again, the tense has changed from the perfect in Winterant to the pluperfect in Winnicent, uh, and that is because this question is being asked right now. Number three is asked right now in the present tense whereas uh, number four is telling you about a question that was asked in the past. So we have an indirect question there. And the translation for the number three is, where did they find the money? Number four, again, we have to have, we have, to have some, some things going on in order to identify uh, the indirect question. We get an asking verb this time. Uh, and then we get our question word. Oh, that's not a very good color. Let's try something else here. Uh, we get uh, we get ubi, which is a question word. Uh, we, and then we get the subjunctive. So those are really the three things that we have to have. We have to have a, a, a verb, a special verb that's either asking it's a mental action or speaking verb. Then we have to have an introductory word that, that is beginning a question like ubi. Uh, and then we have to have that subjunctive at the end. So the translation number four, the judge asked me where they had found the money. Had because in winnocent is pluperfect. We translate that pluperfect uh, with the word had. In number five, we have... We don't, we're not really getting anything as far as the direct question. Uh, but what we do get is we get neskeabot. That is a mental action, not to know. Then we get the question word, cur. And then we get our subjunctive over here. This is an imperfect subjunctive because it uses the present infinitive. So the translation for this one is solius did not know why Quintus was helping the king. Uh, for the last three, try to do those on your own and try to identify 
um, that, that main the verb that signifies a mental action an asking verb or a speaking verb identify it just like we did try to identify um, the question word or the, the word that's introducing the question and then finally try to identify the subjunctive and then translate the sentence so hit pause knock those three out uh, and then push play and see if you get them right okay number six we have mental action in cognoit we have our question word with Quomodo, and we have our subjunctive with Kamparawis. So we have Kogi Dubnus, uh, understood, how, cephalus, prepared the venom or the poison. Uh, for number seven, we still need those same three things, if not at least an understood part. We have uh, skire is, is our is our uh, mental action verb here. The main verb is wolu it, um, but when we get when we get a form of wolo, we expect to get an infinitive. We do get one with skire, so it is the mental action that initiates the question, which begins with quid and ends with that um, imperfect subjunctive essence. So Quintus wanted to know what was inside the temple. That's kind of a tough one, recognizing that infinitive as a mental action verb, but so it is. Just to deal with them. Uh, next, we have solius, tandem, intellexit. Okay, so we get an, we get the intellexit as our as our mental action. We get quo as our introductory word, and then we get fugarent as our imperfect subjunctive. So our translation is finally solus understood or knew. Um, where, quo is where when it's being used as a question word, where Quintus and Duminerix were fleeing. So that is uh, an introductory to just the indirect question. But I also want to deal with, what I also want to deal with is some other uh, uses of the subjunctive and, and being able to identify those as well. Uh, these are uh, these are eight sentences that either have an indirect question or a coon clause in them. So what I want you to do is I want you to go through and I want you to identify whether or not it's a coon clause or an indirect question. And make sure that you know why it's each, you know, why it's one or the other. So hit your pause button, knock those out, and then push play and see how you did. Okay, number one, as I read through, I get... Uh, that is an asking verb for sure. I get cur as a question word. And then I get my subjunctive paraimus. So I have the guards asked us why we were shouting. We use were for was or were, imperfect subjunctive was or were. Uh, number two, we get neske bomb. Uh, that's our mental action. We get quo, which is our question word, and fugisis, which is our pluperfect subjunctive. So uh, I did not know where you had fled or where you had gone. Uh, number three is a cum clause. We get cum plus we get, oh, sorry, let me do that. Uh, we get cum, which introduces the cum clause, and then we get our subjunctive, uh, imperfect subjunctive, uh, militara. And I translate cum as when, when I have a cum clause. So when I was soldiering or when I was in the military in Britain, I was visiting the town of Aquasilis often. Um, it was because we have the ba, and we get that imperfect with uh, militare plus the personal ending M. Uh, number four, we have a cum clause again. I see cum as an introduction. I see consumeres as our imperfect subjunctive uh, in the cum clause. Uh, I translate this. It is when you were eating dinner, or your dinner, when you were eating your dinner, the centurion uh, was, was because of the ball, was looking for you, was seeking you out. Uh, number five, I have explicawit. That's an explain word. That's a speaking word. You're explaining something you're speaking. So that's a, that's a saying verb. We get quomoto, which is our question. And we get our pluperfect subjunctive in, in Sir Wawissa's tis. And translation, the king uh, explained to us how you all, that's T-I-S, 
TIS signifies you all. Right? Bad color again. I'll figure this out here in a second. Um, that uh, TIS right here, I changed it. The TIS signifies that it's you all. So our translation should have been the king explained to us how you all had saved, had because of the ISSE. Remember, we're using that perfect infinitive, so we get the pluperfect subjunctive. Uh, and then I get, um, for number six, we see the introductory word for kum. We get our subjunctive in the pluperfect tense. That's a kum clause. When uh, I had called out the names, I led, Duxi is I led, that's a perfect form. I led the guest to the king. Number seven, we have cognoscra. Once again, this is our mental action. We, we saw it earlier with the Woluit. Uh, this is our mental action. Ubi is our question word. And habitaritis is going to be our uh, imperfect subjunctive. My friend wanted to know where you were living. And you plural. You all were living. Um, number eight, we have an asking word. So this is going to be an indirect question, asking a question word, uh, followed by the two perfect subjunctive. Translation, the girl asked us why we had undertaken such a difficult task. So hopefully you're doing well with these indirect questions and these cum clauses. Uh, again, the only concern that I have is that you're making too much out of this. If you identify it as an imperfect tense, you, it doesn't matter whether it's subjunctive or indicative. If you identify it as an imperfect tense, you use the was or were translation. If you identify it as a pluperfect tense, um, you, need to, uh, you need to make sure that you're translating with a had. Okay, well, that's it for this, and I will get this up for you guys, and hopefully it will help you out.